Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to my weekly crafting and card making video. If we haven't met yet, my name is Patty Bennett. I am so excited that you have joined me today. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been a demonstrator for over 25 years, and I am very happy you have joined me today to see how to make these really cute rainbow cards. <laughs> Aren't these adorable? I totally love them. I think they are so cute. I used some paper piecing on these and I used stamp and blends to color these. I'm going to be giving you lots of tips today for using your stamp and blends markers to color hair and skin and these dresses. Aren't they so much fun? I love these. I am so glad that you're joining me. Just so much fun today. So I am using the Stampin' Up! Hey Girlfriend stamp set. So cute. And the three girls are actually three separate stamps. So I have mounted them onto one block and I'm going to show you how I stamped those and colored those and how I made them into these really fun cards. I just love them. I think they're so much fun. I hope you enjoy this video today. You might be watching a Facebook Live, in which case you'll see the little red Live button up there. I'm watching comments off to the side, but if you comment later on a replay on my blog or on YouTube, I won't see your comments live, but I will come back and read them. So, Welcome again. I see we have lots of people joining in. Welcome everyone from Australia and Washington and California and just all over the world. That is so fun. Yay! All right. I had these three really cute girlfriend cards on my blog. Um, oh gosh, I should have looked. It was earlier this week. And the one that got the most comments was this one. And I had done some paper piecing, so I wanted to explain that a little further. And after I thought about it more, and I was making this rainbow of girlfriends, I thought, oh my gosh, how fun would that be to do a paper piecing rainbow of girlfriends? <laughs> so that's how this card came about, and it's just so cute. Hey, welcome, Debbie. She says she's a first time watch, uh, watching me live. So thank you for joining me. Thank you to everyone who's joining me. Alrighty. So these are just colored with Stampin' Blends and really nothing special or unusual about coloring them. But like I said, I will give you tips as we make this rainbow card. But they are just stamped onto the thick basic white cardstock. I like to use the thick Stampin' Up! originally recommended the thick cardstock when our Stampin' Blends markers first came out a few years ago. And so I just started using the thick and that is just what I like to use. So I tend to gravitate towards that. And of course, in case I forget to mention, you always want to grab your Memento Black ink pad when you are coloring with Stampin' Blends because they are an alcohol marker and you need a pad that won't bleed. So that was those two. Oh, I will note here, this cute border is the Stitched Whimsy Border Die. And it does not actually cut, but it makes this adorable, cute stitched line. Maybe you can see it better just on the inside there. And it's just sort of a fun detail. So I did try that out. I hadn't used it much yet, and I thought it was just a fun little addition. You can see it in two sizes there. I think I have it really handy. Let me just grab it. I think if I take it out of the plastic, you can see it better. So these are the sizes. You have two large rectangles, and then you have some squares and a small rectangle. And it is in the current January to June catalog. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe 
gets carried over into the next catalog. Demonstrators just got to see the new, brand new catalog just this week, and I'm pretty sure I saw it in there. Um, and I'll just say, because people always ask, my magnet cards and my nice little envelopes that I use, they are from Stampin' Storage. And I will link to that when this video is done because people always ask and comment and wonder where I got those. And then I use a Brother P-Touch labeler to label all of my magnet cards and my envelopes. Uh, but I'll link to that post if you would like more information about that. So anyway, that's just a side note because I was remembering that I used these cute dies. Oh, thank you, everyone. I can see your comments. So sweet of you. If you love these cards or, okay, maybe if you just like them, <laughs> you can drop me a couple of hearts. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. She says, yes, it is carrying over. Awesome. So yes, you can still get this die in the new catalog. So don't um, hesitate to click that heart button and leave me a heart. If you have friends that you think would love this video, you can always share it as well, but that's up to you. Okay, so let's talk about the rainbow cards because these are going to be on my blog tomorrow, which will be March 27th. And I will go back and link the direct link after that post is live. Like I said in the beginning, we are using the Hey Girlfriend set, and the three girls are actually three separate stamps, and I just mounted them onto, let's see, which block is this? This is the E block from Stampin' Up. I just put the three of them on there together so that it would be faster to stamp them onto my piece of thick basic white cardstock. And I wanted to do a rainbow so my first card was this one with Stampin' Blends. And I just pulled out, you know I like to swatch my colors. I pulled out what I thought would be a really fun rainbow. Poppy Parade, Flirty Flamingo, Mango Melody, which is on the retiring list. Hello, I don't understand that, but they didn't ask me. <laughs> Granny Apple Green Seaside Spray, which we know Seaside Spray and Purple Posy are retiring because they are in colors. And I'm very sad because I really love those colors. But that was my rainbow for coloring these girls. And I thought that this was a perfect layout for a slimline card. So I've used just your standard size business envelope. And I wrote down, just in case you want to take a screenshot or if you want to write it down or anything, my base card, which is this Poppy Parade piece of cardstock, I cut it at 8 inches by 9 inches. What I suggest you do, though, is when you find which long, skinny envelope you want to use to make your slimline card, I suggest that you grab a ruler and you measure... And then, of course, you give yourself just a little bit of space. But I measured that I wanted mine to be 9 inches. And then I measured this way and um, 4 inches times 2, which is 8, would fit in this one. And since envelopes can be different sizes, I don't want you to cut a whole bunch of cardstock and then find out that um, yours doesn't fit. Um, I just saw a comment go by. Mango Melody Stampin' Blend is retiring. I didn't mean to say that the color itself was retiring. So, um, sorry, thank you for catching that. It's just the Stampin' Blends that are on the retiring list in Mango Melody, which I just, I don't understand because it's an amazing color. <laughs> but anyway, back to making your slimline card. So, if you measure your envelope and then you do your math, you can get a size for your base card. And then I just took a quarter inch off so that my white that I stamped was three and three quarters by eight and three quarters, which you can see just fits with your quarter inch border. Now, uh, had I been possibly a little smarter about this, instead of eight and three quarters, I should have gone with eight and a half and then made this a little bit smaller because then you're getting more out of your white cardstock. But maybe that's too much math and, you know, do what works for you. Let's let's put it that way, right? <laughs> so 
this that was the dimensions that I used for my card so let's look at how I did that so I have that piece of thick basic white at three and three quarters by eight and three quarters and my cute little girls here and my memento black ink pad and I just walked it back and forth and I hope that is not shaking the camera it might be and I do apologize if it is just walk it back and forth get it all inked I always love to turn it over and look just make sure that there isn't a fuzz or you know those little hexagonal dimensional backing things that like live everywhere in a crafter's home sometimes those can show up so I just always kind of look make sure so then I stamped them over towards the left side and re-inked and I just thought this was a better way to be able to make sure that they were fairly evenly spaced instead of stamping them one at a time. I did try one at a time at first and I like ran off the page. I didn't get it spaced well. So by putting all three on this E block like that and stamping them twice, you can see you get a pretty good spacing for this slimline card and if you are just stamping uh, just a standard size card you can see they also fit perfectly on the front of that as well okie doke so I do like to let my memento ink dry a little bit I do not just start coloring right away with my memento ink and so I am going to set this one aside and I'm going to use one that I stamped previously because I just always want to make sure that the ink is dry. So I'm going to just going to give you a few tips on coloring hair and coloring skin. So let's start with the skin. and I will show you what I did here. And, and by the way, if I didn't say it, uh, my blog is pattystamps.com and it is where you will find these cards on March 27th. Okay, that's when they will be blogged. So I just pulled out several of the colors that I used for skin and for hair. And these are my Stampin' Blends. This is just a a storage drawer organizer box. It's nothing fancy. I just put them here for the video. And I used, I'm just going to pull these out for doing the skin. We'll do that first and talk about the skin and then we'll go on to the hair. I tried Petal Pink, Ivory, Crumb Cake. Those were kind of my three main colors that I tried out for skin. And then I wanted to show you that you can actually start making other colors by layering two different ones. So dark petal pink and ivory gives you that, which is different than these. And then light petal pink and light crumb cake gives you that. And you could make an infinite number of combinations by combining these in different ways and it does depend which one you put down first and which one you color over it. You know, like if I did this one first and this one second, it's going to look different than this one first and this one second. So just all sorts of different ways you might want to combine those colors to work on your skin tones. One thing I did discover right away when I was working on coloring this stamp is that you do not want to take your marker and just start like coloring, 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 because that is way too much ink for these tiny little faces with a lot of black outline, and it will start to bleed. I guess actually that goes for the entire images. It's not just the skin, but you definitely want to just... Do a very light touch, and I either tip works. I kind of like the larger, broader tip, and I just, I am like 
barely touching the tip onto my paper. I just went so lightly, it's just barely touching. And by doing that, I do not risk having too much saturation and I will not get any of that fuzzy or bleeding. So trust me, I know from experience on this. <laughs> so now let's, okay, that was um, light petal pink, by the way. I was just going from here. Let's actually, let's just go um, in order here. I'll, let's do a dark petal pink. And for the girls that have the open eyes, do not color over the eyes because they will look really odd. You need to leave the white of their eyes showing because people don't have skin colored eyeballs. They have white around the center. So yeah, just saying. <laughs> okay, so there's the light petal pink and the dark petal pink. And then let's try ivory because I think that's a really good kind of a mid tone. I like this one a lot for their skin. I also like the light crumb cake. I did notice, and you've probably noticed this if you color with Stampin' Blends markers, that as this sits just for a minute, it does soak into the paper, it lightens a little, it evens out a little, and you get a much nicer, softer, blended look as you let it sit just for a minute. So if you start to color and you think, oh my gosh, oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, it's too much or it's blotchy or whatever. Just wait just a minute, like count to 60 and you'll see that it just softens out and it evens out. So there's three different skin tones. And then let's just do a light crumb cake over here. See what that one looks like. Again, super, super, super light touch. I am like barely dabbing the tip and just letting the paper soak up some of that ink. So just barely. And I won't do all of these because I think you get the idea. Oops, and I just went out of the line. When that dries, I will use my color lifter and push that back in. But that gives you an idea of some different skin tones. And I think that's marvelous. I love the variety. Let's look at this one again. Look at the variety of those skin tones just by coloring and layering these five colors in different ways. I really like them. I think it's really fun. I'm going to put that right there for my inspiration. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about a couple of different tips for coloring hair. And for hair, I found... Sorry. <laughs> I'll just bring them over here. I think this is easier. So for hair, I did find that I liked cinnamon cider, I liked soft suede, I liked the bronze marker, which is kind of the other half of the ivory one. They come in a two-pack. And then I have smoky slate and gray granite. So those were the colors I was using. So gray granite, smoky slate. Uh, what was this? Soft, soft suede. This is the bronze, which is the other half of ivory. And then cinnamon cider. Those were kind of my go-to colors for hair. Uh, I also used, of course, I did some blonde, but I did that with our Mango Melody. And then if you want to make kind of this, um, oh, like a strawberry blonde, then I threw in a little bit of Calypso Coral and a little bit of Cinnamon Cider on top of the Mango Melody. So let's do a couple of those. Let me show you some tips here. So let's just start with the blonde since we were talking about her. I'm going to do, I just love this girl's hair, man. I wish I had hair like this. Isn't it adorable? 
all these curls. So I'm using the bullet tip and I'm squiggling because her hair is kind of squiggly. So I just did squiggles. That's the light mango melody. Then on the dark mango melody, I added a little richness. And you may not really be able to see exactly, but I'll lift this up closer and just show you. So there's the light and the dark mango melody with squiggles. And I'm leaving some white. I like to leave a little white. And then let's do on this one, let's try the light uh, cinnamon. I was going to say cinnamon sugar. It's cinnamon cider. <laughs> Give her just a little bit of some dark in there. Okay, a little bit of that. Then um, the light Calypso coral. And that will make her have like the strawberry blonde color. I know some people have hair that's like really just all super duper one color, but I think that's really cute to give it all sorts of different highlights and lowlights and colors and whatnot. I think that's cute. Okay, what other one should we do? Let's just do, let's do kind of the same thing on this one and I'll show you what I did with these four tones. So I always like to start with the light. This is gray granite. And so squiggle, 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 squiggle with light gray granite. And then a little bit of dark gray granite. Oh, thank you. Who was that? Marlene just said that my tips are helpful. I appreciate that. So kind of you. Thank you. Okay, so dark and light gray granite with a little bit of the white still showing gives you that idea of kind of dark, not quite black, but dark hair. And then I'm going to add some smoky slate. Just a few squiggles, again, leaving a little bit of white. And then for the darker, kind of like down here behind her face by her neck you want to have it a little bit darker and this is the dark smoky slate and just a couple couple little squiggly bits like that and if you feel after you let this sit a minute and you kind of look at it and you think well I want it a little more filled in or whatever you can do that it's easier to add more color than it is to try to take it away so I would suggest that you always do your best to just start light, start less, and add to it. Alrighty, now let's do one here with the, the sort of the warmer brown tones. And I'm, I think I'll do hers. So we're going to use the light soft suede. For these two girls that have straighter hair, I actually kind of I'm gonna try to move my hands so you can see. I actually kind of give her like strokes of hair, okay? I don't try to color in solid. So there's light, what did I say? Soft suede. And that was just like strokes of hair. But I want to give her a little bit of warmness to that color. So I'm going to do light cinnamon cider and do it in the same way. So just little strokes. And I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. And then I'm going to go over it again with a little more of the light um, soft suede. But I'm just, if you keep adding while it's wet, which isn't long, but if you do, it'll tend to blend it out. I want more of these little strokes to stay there. Yes, Deborah is asking a different suggestion for blonde since Mango Melody is retiring. Yes, we'll just grab our um, saffron and our daffodil. In fact, let's do that on the next one instead of the mango. That's totally fine. So now just to fill in a little bit of those white spots, I just went back over a little bit with the light soft suede, but it still looks like hair because you have those strokes and those different colors going on and not just solid coloring. 
Okay, so I'm just sorry if I have to reach here. I'm going to grab my saffron and my daffodil. So let's do that. And I think I will start with the light daffodil. And let's do this gal. No, let's do this gal. So again, I'm drawing in what I would think of as hair. Our little cute little squiggly curls right there. And then we'll go over that with some dark daffodil. That's really about all it needs, but I am going to just try this dark saffron just to see. It's really close to the daffodil, so it's really almost not showing. But daffodil and saffron are a terrific substitute for mango. So that kind of covers, basically, you have like your warmer brunette with the um, cinnamon cider mostly. You have all, almost, you know, gray black lights and grays in the blacks with your gray granite and your smoky slate. You can do mango melody, daffodil or saffron for a blonde. This one, let's see, I don't think we did this one. Let's do that. I, what did I use? I think, I think I used crumb cake. Let's do that one. Wait, that's ivory. Oh, we can use ivory too. And crumb cake. So let's, let's do crumb cake on this gal right here. Or maybe this is getting boring. Maybe I'm sure you get the idea, right? But again, just strokes, not solid coloring. That was light crumb cake. Let's do dark crumb cake. Haha, <laughs> I can hear the Blue Jays squawking outside. They're like, lady, come back with the peanuts. You left us. You stranded us. <laughs> And then I'm thinking that needs like, maybe just, this is bronze. What if we just did, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So crumb cake and bronze, that's a great combo here for sort of this a cooler brown. This I would call this a warmer brown and this is almost a cooler brown. So there you go. There are some different ideas for skin and for hair. Oh, thank you, Michelle. She says she loves my tips as well. Thank you. Let's see. Was there a question back here about the markers? Oh, yes. Margine is asking difference in markers and blends. So our Stampin' Write markers are water-based, and we have all, all of the Stampin' Up! colors in Stampin' Write markers. They also have the bullet tip which we're going to use in a minute, and the broad tip. The Stampin' Blends are an alcohol-based marker, and you can blend colors really well. I have a series of about 15 videos on my YouTube channel with instructions on using Stampin' Blends and blending colors. We're not doing so much of the color blending here because these are so tiny but I've done lots of videos showing you tips for blending colors on bigger images so yes great question about the different um, markers oh Michelle thank you she says I'm a stamp and blends master oh my goodness that's super kind of you thank you oh Chris Ann says, how about a redhead for the last girl? Let's do a redhead. So I'm pretty much thinking um, cinnamon cider that we'll start with, and then we'll see, uh, maybe add some bronze. What do you think? I think that, it, I know it seems brown. Let's add, do you think dark Calypso coral, maybe, to that mix for a redhead? I'm kind of... I'm thinking maybe. And you know what? It's just paper, so we can try it. So let's start with the cinnamon cider. Oh yeah, this is this looks browner than a redhead, but redheads can either go, you know, to the blonde or they can go to the brownish color. So let's see. Let's add the dark calypso coral and let's see. Let's see what this girl looks like. Oh yeah. How cute is she? And, you know, you can always stamp a whole bunch of these 
and just play with color. And then write down what you used because, trust me, by the time you do several of these, you will forget. <laughs> well, okay, I can't promise you that. Let's say it this way. I will forget what I use. So that's why when I swatch my colors, I love to write down what I used. Okay, so there we have all different sorts of hair styles and colors and skin colors and whatnot. And what I wanted to show you next was the paper piecing for the dresses. Because you probably don't need to see me color in the um the dresses. That's pretty self-explanatory. I did use, to show you, show you my rainbow again. This was my rainbow of colors that I used for this card that has the colored dresses. Oops, ignore that for a minute. That was going to be my tip about the eyes, so I should show you that as well. But those were the colors, the poppy, the flamingo, mango, granny apple, seaside, and posy for when I colored them with the markers. Then, then I decided, since I had so many comments about this cute card that I blogged earlier this week, this is the heart paper from the snail mail package. It is so cute. Such cute paper. And I thought, well, I'm doing a rainbow. So what I grabbed was the Brights paper stack. And it, it doesn't match these exactly. I didn't want to match these. I wanted to go with all Brights just to give it a little bit brighter. So if we put these together, you can see the difference in the rainbow. It's close, but you have a little bit more vibrance over here in the blue and the purple. Oh, thank you. I see lots of hearts. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying this. So let's look at what paper piecing is and how I did it. With this paper, and you can use absolutely any paper, you will find that a tiny pattern looks very cute and it's very much more in scale with these gals. And if you're older like me and you played with Betsy McCall paper dolls back in the 60s, you will enjoy this. <laughs> Those were some of my favorites. But what I did was I used the stamp that we used on the basic white paper. And I went ahead and stamped onto each of the colors. So onto the red onto the flamingo, the mango, the granny apple, the Pacific point, and the Highland heather. You can really almost not even see it on there, but it's there. They are stamped on there. Let's see. This, this one is easier to see, and this one is easier to see. Let's do that so you can see that. So you can see that I have stamped them onto there, and then all I do is use my paper snips to cut out. So let's go through a couple of tips on this card and for paper piecing with the, um, the rainbow of paper. All right, paper snips are super great because of the nice fine tip, uh, the maneuverability, the ease of cutting. But I wanted to share one tip on this gal that's doing the cute little heart with her hands. I started to try to cut all of that out with the hands and everything and I was like no way I can't I just that's too little and so all I did for this particular image was I cut around the skirt I included the waistband but I'll show you that I used my markers to color her bodice and her arms and I did not try to fussy cut around all of that because, I don't know, I mean, you can, you totally can. If you have better eyeballs and better fussy cutting skills than I do, you go for it and you cut around all of that business. But all I did was cut out the skirt. So if you look at this image, then you'll see that the skirt is cut out and I just used my markers 
to color the bodice and the arms. And then I could use the skin tone for the hands and not worry about fussy cutting all around that because that was sort of going to put me over the edge. <laughs> so that's a tip for that one. And then what was the other tip I wanted to give you? Uh, well, maybe there wasn't another one. Okay, well, anyway, so yeah, there you go. So you can just see that when you cut out the different pieces, you have all the different parts there to layer. Um, I did, I did take some time and I cut out the leggings on the purple one and the mango one. I did skip the purse because there was just about no way I was going to be able to cut out those teensy tiny little handles. That was not going to be fabulous. So are you probably, I'm sorry, you don't need to see me cut this whole thing, but I did just want to show you when you get to her arms, see how her arm goes into there. So it's here. I'm sorry. I know it's probably very hard to see, but you don't have to be super, super fussy about that. You can just sort of cut around her fingers like that. And then when you, where was our colored one that we started? Here we go. So then when you lay it on top of here and you glue it down, you can see that you'll color her hand with her arm. And of course you'd, you'd cut in between the legs there. Oh, that almost looks like a skirt, huh? Ha, huh, that's cute. All right, and so you would add your pieces like this after I colored first. So after you get all the skin and all the hair done, then you can start layering your pieces. And I used my liquid glue, uh, put it right onto the card and then stuck the little paper pieced dresses and leggings and whatnot right on top. And that is how I got that. I did go ahead and match their shoes and their bows or their headbands to the color just because I wanted that rainbow effect. But of course you could, you know, mix and match and you could do this anyway. And it would be so fun just to go through all of your designer paper and pick out all sorts of different patterns to use on this. My favorite personally is the polka dots. I think that's adorable. I probably will do another one of these with all polka dots because I don't know. I just think they're so cute. So cute. Okay, so two last tips and then I will let you go. I mentioned this marker. This is Light Pool Party. And I decided that for the gals with the open eyeballs, even though I know not everybody has blue eyes, it looked to me pretty good to just barely, barely dab the blue and try not to fill the whole white space. Try to leave white. And in person, which you're not, you probably can't tell, but in person, that really just, boom, like it sparked their eyes. And it really just made them kind of sparkle. So I just did that on everybody's eyes. Even though I know not everybody has blue eyes, but it just really looks cute in person to not just have blank white eyeballs. And I was afraid if I used brown or green that it would just like fill the whole thing because it's hard to get a tiny little dot of color on there. <laughs> oh, good. Christine says I have inspired her today. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad you like the paper piecing tip, Melissa. Awesome. Yes. Oh, good point. Deborah says paper piecing is a great way to use up tiny scraps. That is an excellent point. Excellent. And then my last tip is drawing this border. I was not a huge fan of just putting the white on here. I thought it needed something. And I thought about adding a greeting like I did on these. I used the images, the stamp sentiments from the set on these 
but I just couldn't figure out exactly where I wanted to put it on this. I really didn't want to cover up somebody's legs. I didn't want to cover up their dress. I didn't want to cover their head. And so I thought, hmm, okay, what about just a border? And so I wanted to show you using the black Stampin' Write marker, which by the way, this is available separately. You don't have to buy the entire set of markers to get black. So I always have several of these on hand for not only drawing borders, but for writing a message if I want to in the inside of a card or something. So let me give you a tip on doing the border. You can use whatever straight edge you would like, but I have a tip. You saw me use this ruler earlier. It's just a metal ruler, but it has a cork backing, which right here gives the metal part a little bit of a lift. So when you put this down, the metal is not touching the paper. So there's a little gap under here. Similarly, if you shop in the little drafting section at Staples or online, you can get these triangles that have a beveled edge. So it's the same thing. There's a little bevel here. If I hold it this way, I don't know if it'll focus. I don't know if you can see. But what it means is that if you put your triangle down this way with the raised portion up here, it is not touching the paper. Now, why is this important? Because with ink, if you have it the other way around, so you have your solid surface touching the paper and you draw a line, oftentimes the ink will tend to suck underneath and then you'll pick it up and it'll like smear it. So this way, if you have a little gap and you have air under there and you draw your line, then you don't have that... Um, that chance of the ink sucking underneath. Okay, so enough talking, let's do this. I'm gonna have to stand up and look over my camera because, yep, okay. So I like the clear triangle because then I can see exactly where I'm stopping and starting. And when you draw the line, do not go super fast. I know I'm talking right into the camera, sorry. Do not go super fast. Because if you go really fast, you're going to kind of get like a light and a dark, and it'll sort of skip. So I just go nice and slow. And it's really weird because I'm too far away to see with my bifocals. But anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> so that's what I do with a border. The, the skinny bullet end of the stamp and write marker and then get some kind of a straight edge with a beveled edge. So whether it be a ruler or a triangle or whatever it is you have will work as long as it has that nice beveled edge. Okay, so there you go. Those are all my tips for my cute little Hey Girlfriend cards with the rainbow of coloring and paper piecing. And if you have questions, here's the time for you to ask because I would love to hang out and just answer any questions. Oh, thank you. Tammy says the border was a perfect touch. I add borders to a lot of cards, actually. I think part of it is because of my drafting background. I was in drafting for 19 years with structural engineering. And so, you know, I'm a big fan of like straight edges and perpendicular and parallel and like nice neat edges and all that so part of it is that it's just my design um, preference but uh, I also think it just really makes a nice clean finish to a lot of different cards or designs thank you Lori thank you Marlene thank you Judy thank you thank you Anybody have questions about the Hey Girl set? Um, it is on the retiring list, so if it's something that you like, you probably want to jump over to pattystamps.com, click on the Shop Online buttons, and get that ordered. It's number 154516. I also put a link up at the top of this video, or if you're watching later, it's in the description on YouTube. But yeah, this is on the retiring list, so it will not be available in the new catalog. So you might want to 
Uh, wait, no, it's not. That retiring list isn't out yet. Well, okay, but it's not in the new catalog. Yeah. So just to explain, there's a couple of lists out and the retiring list is something that people can figure out because if you can see the new catalog and you know it's not in there, then it's probably on the retiring list, right? Anyway, so yeah, I mean, I'm not telling you any secrets, but if you want it, I would grab it. Let's just say that. Oh my goodness. I'm, I think I'm digging myself in a hole. <laughs> it's a keeper, Rosemary. Let's just put it that way. You are so right. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, Virginia made a great point. She said, drawing that border is kind of like giving it an extra mat, but you're not. So you're not using extra cardstock. You're not adding weight to your card, to the mailing, whatever. So that's a great point. I love that. I think that's very true. All right. So any questions about this? Oh, yes, like paper dolls. Exactly, Debbie. Exactly. All right. If you are interested at all in seeing this new catalog, it is out for demonstrators only right now. And if it's something that you're thinking about, I love the fact that demonstrators get to see and purchase early. That is one of the biggest perks. If that is something that appeals to you along with the discount, you can join now and be ready to order from the new catalog on April 1st as a demonstrator pre-order. We're going to have select items that we can get a whole month before the catalog goes live. So if you need uh, information on that or you have questions, you are welcome to message me, email me. Um, the best way to contact me is go to my blog, pattystamps.com and click on the contact me button. That really is the easiest way for me to get your messages. So I would be happy to help you with any information or questions that you have. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed these cute ideas. Check out March 27th. All the these cute rainbow samples and tips will be on pattystamps.com. And I hope that you have fun stamping with this set. If you have it, if you don't have it, you might want to grab it. Uh, like I said, it's not in the new catalog, so it's something that you probably would want to get now if it's something that you want. You're welcome, Susan. You're welcome, Jen. Thank you all so much for joining me. So sweet of you. And I will catch you next Friday. I'm live every Friday here. Um, oh, except last Friday, I had a pre-recorded video for you. I don't know if you saw it on the Dandy Garden Dragonfly Bundle. Um, I was away celebrating my son's 30th birthday. I don't know how that happened. How in the world can my child be 30? But he is. And so we were celebrating and I did a pre-recorded video for you instead of a live. But I'll be back next week live and hang out with you and show you some fun things. You're welcome, Christine. Thanks, Rosemary. You too. Have a wonderful weekend. We are going to continue celebrating with our son. Oh, thanks, Diz. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy stamping and all those good things. See you next week.